Okay, we got a pretty quick garage session today. I mean, the total time is supposed to be like working time is only supposed to be like 15 minutes, but we'll see. I need to get in early to do something now, then eat because I have a long workout later. Uh, so this is just like clean and jerk maintenance. So we're building up to only like a 235 clean front squat and split jerk. And then that's gonna be every two minutes. We're gonna do one set. And then later on, I've got the proven total, which in one hour is a five rep max back squat, bench, three rep max bench press, one rep max power clean, and then one rep max weighted pull up. So that's why I'm getting this out of the way early. Um, just kind of get everything flowing. Uh, I thought about skipping it because of, you know, the sheer volume of everything going on today, but I figured like if anything it's not super heavy and it'll be a good chance for me to test the fronings for like squats which i haven't squatted any issues just yet and then i'm gonna use some of my normal nano 13s mixed in and then i've got this brand new aleco performance weightlifting barbell because they exchanged out my hybrid bar. Thank God, because that was like one of the worst bars I've ever paid money for. And I paid a lot of money for it. And uh, for some reason they recalled it for like potential breaking. Um, so they exchanged it for this. And this is a brand new bar. Uh, if you've never used an Aleco bar, it's pretty special. Uh, some people out there probably never use an Aleco bar, but I hope you do. They're really good bars. They're, admittedly not my favorite out of all like the top tier weightlifting bars but by no means does that mean they're bad so this is gonna be kind of like i don't know i guess the sport training bar nowadays um so like retails for like 880 dollars it's got four needle bearings per sleeve it's got that aleco knurling just not as aggressive on this one as it is on the of course like the the actual weightlifting barbell and the competition bar but you know this is just like a training barbell so today we're gonna break in this barbell just picked up a whole set of flex plates for 370 pounds for $500. Ridiculous. Could you imagine what that would have gone for during the pandemic? Like, at least triple that. And the center knurling. It's not bad, but it catches. Like, I feel like this is gonna tear up my shirt. So I'm noticing with the 13 fronings, the drawstring does not want to stay tight. So when you tighten it, it eventually will work itself out of that. And I haven't figured out how I can solve that problem. Because I just tightened it and it's back to being loose. Let's see here, let's try it again. Yeah, the drawstring definitely gets looser. It like doesn't want to lock. Cause now after just that, they're already loose again. Okay, this is first working set. Okay, not bad. Legs need a warm up still. Definitely missed this roomier fit of the Nano 13s. And the fact that they stay on around the ankle. But they are for sure more stiff. Like, it's very noticeable that the 13 fronings are more flexible than the normal ones. And they're softer too. You can feel it in the heel. 
which I'm pretty sure it's the same like everything because it always is the same stuff but I think it's just the upper lets everything kind of just move a little bit better they could just be telling me shit not like normal I felt like the Fronings uh, I did get pulled forward a little bit on that one I think on the front squat Maybe I'm just trying to go too fast. You know what I mean? Uh, Adventures to just kind of change it up. Which, between all of them, is going to get a soft as one, for sure. It's soft. They're noticeably soft. Didn't realize my camera shut off. So. Probably have to cut in my iPhone stuff. And uh, hopefully that's okay. So, second to last set with the Fronings. You know, like, as loose as they are around the ankle, I don't know if it's that much of a difference going between the Adventurers and even just like the normal nanos. For something like this, the difference isn't like great enough to say, oh, that's not a good shoe. Don't get me wrong, I know it's gonna be an annoyance for some people. Absolutely, I mean, it's not a little problem, it's actually a big problem. You know, like, if you're sprinting, if you're doing sled pushes, your feet are probably not gonna stay inside of these shoes, and that's gonna be a problem, but, the fact that they're slip-ons means, you know, there's going to be inherently a little bit of heel slip between them. And if you're okay with that, you know, I think you'll be fine with these. It's like the Froning 11s. I mean, they're slip-ons, right? So, kind of figure that there's going to be some kind of heel slip. With the 12s, there was heel slip, and they were not slip-ons. And so when it's like that, it's not really as forgivable. <sighs> but yeah, the, on that last one, I mean, despite the shoes feeling like they're softer and more flexible and that their seals lit, never once was I like, oh man, I don't know if I should do this lift. I might not make it. Still fine. I feel like normal Nano 13s. These are gonna be fine, you know. And I think a lot of the reason why people are buying these is because they like Froning too. So if you like Froning too, there's, a, there's another added plus to buying these or using these shoes. Um, so far, yeah, the only con that I'm seeing is that they are a little bit loose around the ankle and they're a little bit narrow. But, yeah, once you get past all that, I think they're actually pretty good. Definitely a better successor to the 11s than the 12s were, 100%. Okay, just got to the gym. It's a little bit later than I wanted to be here by, so I have, like, really only, like, 15 minutes to get warmed up and get this thing moving. So, once again, we're doing the proven total. So, one hour, it's going to be a five-rep back squat, a three-rep bench press, a one rep power clean, and then a uh, one rep weighted pull up. So hopefully I can get like two, or 375 on the back squat and then 225, 235 on the bench press. And uh, I don't know, maybe like 255, 260 on the power clean. And then on the weighted pull up, maybe like 115-ish, hopefully. We'll see, we'll see how this thing shakes out. I don't plan on hitting my like, absolute maxes in in one hour uh, the time frame is just it's pretty limited it's worse than like doing crossfit total so let's see how this thing goes we gotta get warmed up let's go okay the stage is set let's get it rolling Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm a little ahead now, so kind of slow down a little bit. Take my time on the power cleans. I probably should have spent more time on the back squat because the bench was quick. I got to where I needed to be in like 10 minutes. Shit. I definitely don't think I ate enough today. I ended up eating only like half a cauliflower pizza after I worked out in the morning. And I knew it wasn't gonna be enough, but I gotta cut because I'm going to Vegas this weekend. That one felt better than 245, but let's try 255 and I think that's gonna be it. Definitely the most annoying thing about these shoes is that you gotta keep on tightening them. I haven't figured out a way to keep these things tight. I feel like the tab that they put on it is backwards. Okay, no 255 today. I'm pretty sure I missed all my pull-ups. It kind of sucks. This is probably it. 96 pounds. Okay, so that's the workout. Got 355 on my back squat, which was a lot less than I was expecting to get, but it's all right. Bench press was 225, which was what I expected to get. Power clean was 250, which I was thinking like 245 to 255, so like that's pretty much what I was expecting. The pull up, I was expecting to do 100 pounds, but I only got, um, I got 88 pounds. Which Kind of depressing. I used to do weighted pull-ups like crazy. This kind of is what it is today. Uh, that's pretty rough for one hour. Like I, I started too fast. I should have slowed the the back squat down a lot. Spent more time on the back squat. I had a lot of time to power clean, and I didn't need that time. For sure, didn't need that time. But I mean, you live and learn. The the only number that just wasn't what I was expecting it to be was the back squat. As far as the shoes goes, I mean they handle everything just fine. Like. Granted, I didn't hit my back squat number today, but I felt just fine squatting in these. I didn't think that they were like unstable. They're a little unsure because of the, the fit around the ankle, but once you get past that and you know the shoes aren't gonna fall off or anything, then it's fine. Um, the power clean, I did have to like tighten a bunch of times, which was, that was very annoying, but there's a give and take with slip on shoes. And if you want the convenience, then you gotta you know deal with a little bit of a uh, loose fit around the ankle. I'm trying to hit this workout right now, which is a bunch of hang dumbbell clean and jerks and pull-ups. And uh, I'm probably gonna be completely wiped after, but we'll see. Thank you. 